As we establish a secure foothold in space, we have become acutely aware of the need to become a sustainable civilization. Sadly, global history is defined by national interests battling each other for domination, using racism, bigotry, deception, threats, and military superiority to grab resources and settle deep disagreements over who owns what. Spacefaring nations are doing this again. This antiquated way of thinking is a problem we have to solve to become a sustainable, thriving, multi-planet civilization. Because space is hard, and life in space and life on new planets will be far harsher than anything we have ever known. We need new thinking to break these recurring patterns. We need new thinking to become a sustainable civilization. We need new thinking to successfully explore and settle sister worlds. We need a plan B. So, how do we build a plan B? The solution has to come from national interests. Nations write the rules of international commerce. Nations negotiate confidence-building measures to minimize false starts and misunderstandings. The problem exists because property responsibilities and rights come from national parliaments, and these have not been negotiated in outer space law. And this blocks our ability to say who owns what now that we can get there. The proposition here is that we investors, entrepreneurs, and ordinary citizens need greater certainty to invest our faith, time, and money. We need confidence-building measures to manage the risk of misunderstandings in the dangerousness of space. And our nations need to work together for the common good. So, how can we foster pragmatic all of humanity wins? How can we create legal reliability to cut investment risk? How can we do this with the limited knowledge we have today? Here's a liftoff point to start the discussion. Knowing we also need to define roles, responsibilities, and accountabilities, we could organize trading alliances, organize trading standards, and organize trading territories. First, we can organize trading alliances in a treaty called SOLCO, the Soul System Colonization Treaty. The largest, most ambitious investment ever undertaken is the International Space Station, and it only happened when nations decided to collaborate. The idea is to use this lesson to organize nations into collaborative trading alliances. To organize territories before we go, where nations must join an alliance to participate, and each alliance organizes the common laws of its off-Earth territories. SOLCO could have three purposes collaboratively protect Earth and its off-Earth colonies from space threats, manage off-Earth international territories, trading rules, and international scientific research, and it could arbitrate international law, contracts, and extradition. Second, we can organize trading standards. With commercial trade treaties in place, we put the foundations in place to spark incentives to fund newly thriving schools to create millions of new jobs and settlement opportunities, to train teams to live and work in space so we can send them forward to build and inhabit larger space stations, moon factories, science stations, and colonies. De-risking investor uncertainty is at the heart of this because settlers, entrepreneurs, and investors need incentives to invest our sweat, time, and money, and our lives. The way is through property compensation. Every Alliance citizen could have right of title that flows from being in an Alliance territory. The individual right to freely own, buy, and sell off-Earth real estate, resources, and intellectual property. Some Alliances may not allow personal ownership, and that's fine. Some will. Healthy competition helps us succeed faster. The third thing we can do is organize territories before we go. We can organize the geography, then organize how we divide up territories, and then organize incentives to sweep away impactor threats, bootstrapping ourselves to space by removing this very real danger. To organize solar system geography, we propose sorting celestial bodies into five types. The first on our list is impactor threats. The current belief is that these are impossible to stop, which is true using the technology and the methods we have now. Could SOLCO offer a better way to develop the common defense? 
Right now, no one can own outer space property. Let's start by changing the rules. Let's designate impactors as real assets, jointly owned by all alliances through Solco. This creates the means to create contracts, to dispose of the asset, to remove the threat. The second is colonizable bodies that could support human settlement. We can designate these as belonging to all alliances through Solco until we sort out territorial divisions. Alliances can negotiate divisions long before we get there. There are also special cases to consider. The moon is a special case. It will always belong to all of us. We can think of it as a slightly bigger international space station. Let's catalog and designate the moon as sole co-managed international territory, our shared launch pad to the solar system. The second special case are bodies that have evidence of life or appear to be capable of sustaining life. Let's assume that life is rare in the vast cosmos. Let's create a sole co-scientific agency to protect, manage, research, and police biomarker zones that sustain life. Without international rules of conduct, there will be open argument about what to do next if biomarkers appear. We can design rules to make sure that biomarker surveys are the first scan performed on every survey mission, where detection automatically leads to scientific oversight. Scientific oversight becomes especially important with the third special case, if we discover evidence of intelligent life. As we act to protect Earth's biosphere, let's create what Star Trek fans call the Prime Directive, Knowing our shameful history of colonial slavery and genocide, let's act now to exclude intelligent life from colonization. Let's act as we hope aliens will act with us if we are the less advanced species. Turning next to the third major type, gas bodies, such as the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, it may be unimaginable to think that these will ever be explored. But the future is not known. Let's designate gas bodies as sole co-objects to manage these assets in law for future negotiation. The fourth major type is tumbling bodies, asteroids and comets. With certain exceptions, let's designate them as free for the taking. First come, first harvested, first settled. The first exception, if surveyors detect biomarkers, Solco automatically takes control and compensates the discoverer. The second exception, if surveyors determine the object is on a near-Earth or near-colony trajectory, Solco takes ownership and pays bounties to successfully remove the threat. The fifth major type is space junk. Currently, nations are responsible for their own garbage, but there has been little incentive to sweep it up. Let's make space junk a salvageable asset, where any company can harvest and dispose of the junk and cost is profitably reclaimed through Solco arbitration where Solco earns operating revenue by collecting a percentage of arbitration awards. Now, on to the second geographic step. The second organizing step is to organize territories for settler certainty. What we do now is a winner-take-all approach that will inevitably lead to war. With Plan B, we design and divide up territories before we go. First, wherever practical, Let's organize standard international zones for every colonizable body. For the planets and moons of a designated size, this includes the North and South Poles, the Prime Meridian, the Equator, and shared infrastructure. We can use the Law of the Sea as a template to define orbital and atmospheric navigation rules and data sharing. And we can organize territorial allocations in various ways as we experiment to find out what works best. For example, orange slices, bullseyes, geodesic hexagons, terraformable planet designs, and P3 ownership of smaller moons and asteroids. We can also negotiate how to manage shared underground structures such as sinkholes, lava tubes, and hidden caves. We will need to negotiate access because natural caves offer immediate shelter, aid, and comfort, but might be a refuge for ancient life. Eventually, we will have the capacity to build underground cities, tunnels, mines, and surface infrastructure. Some will be transport systems linking alliance territories, but who owns and operates them? 
Should international highways be in international zones? Should this be sole co-jurisdiction? Much like today's International Space Station, this requires broad expertise, sovereign financing, and capitalization bonds. What organizing rules can we put in place before we go? And yet, none of this matters if we can't protect ourselves from the impactors that threaten our birth planet and new settlements. Our civilization needs to protect itself, but there's a challenge. The view of the space agencies is that we can only respond to a threat when it comes near Earth orbit. They say we cannot get there early enough to act. And so, missiles and lasers are being developed in the hope that we can divert or destroy impactors right before they hit. But waiting until the last minute means we only get one shot to get it right. This is highly risky, considering what we face. This includes large threats, medium threats, dangerously small threats, and our own space junk, billions of bits of engineering garbage, with more soon to be orbiting other planets, if we continue the current practice of dumping garbage in space just like we dump garbage in the oceans. The challenge we all face is that the current approach a business-as-usual response is not a sustainable, forward-thinking, entrepreneurial response. The idea here is that it is time for change, because we are stuck on a rock. The space science agencies have done amazing work. They designed the very first tiny manned spacecraft, and now private companies design their own. They put the first astronauts on the moon, and now private companies send employees and tourists into space. They designed the first interplanetary missions, and now companies do this too. They did the pioneering work. They have done their job. Now is the time to shift to a commercial space trading culture managed by dedicated space commerce agencies to take us the next step into space, taking us to space as a trading civilization, using financial incentives to bootstrap ourselves beyond Earth orbit before humanity gets stuck again surprised and fearful, praying for a last-ditch miracle. It is a fact that getting ahead of the risk is the far better way. We can use commercial profitability, productivity, and speed to rapidly scale our civilization beyond our precious tiny planet with space agencies focused back to space science, with space commerce agencies negotiating the rules, and the private sector bringing speedy commercial innovation skills to the table. Because speed is what we need. SpaceX's success is proof of the superior speed of private, entrepreneurial, out-of-the-box innovation. If compensation and profitability is there, private innovators will create ways to get us ahead in years and decades, not centuries, when there are incentives to rapidly scale and legal and commercial frameworks to progressively grow market incentives, to create the trading webs we need to bootstrap ourselves to sister planets. It is true that we will build a solar trading civilization, but humans need greater certainty to flourish. We need pragmatic incentives to bootstrap the next steps. We need profitable opportunities to make space work better. The idea here is to define territories, roles, responsibilities, and accountabilities to sustain our advance to sister worlds. These are ideas to start creating Plan B. We can organize trading groups, organize trading standards, and organize trading territories. Because we need an investable future. An investable future for all of us.